What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive, and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's majestic and fantastic video, we are continuing with Tom Taylor's Nightwing, issue number 98. But before we jump into the world of DC and the acrobatic world of Dick Grayson, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way you guys never miss out on anything that happens on this majestic channel. And because he managed to cross over a thousand subs, let's raise the bar and go full on Super Saiyan as we try to get 70 more subs before the end of 2022. So yeah, don't be rude. It's free folks. <laughs> it's the price of the mission. Don't be a nerd. Show some class. Hit that subscribe button. Thus, without further ado, let's get silly and heroic with Nightwing. Issue number 98. Our story begins where the last issue left off with Nightwing and Batgirl having to guard Boss Moroni at one of Batman's safe houses, only to be met with the arrival of Rick Grayson. Now, in case you guys don't know or have purposely forgotten, Dick Grayson, back when he was shot in the head by KG Beast, the dude lost his memories, and so he adopted a new persona called Rick Grayson. Straight up, the whole thing was dumb and stupid. No one reading comics at the time liked the idea of Dick being called Rick. Uh, <laughs> legit, it was a collective no amongst readers. But nonetheless, it happened. Therefore, the fact that Dick is standing before Rick means something isn't right, since they were both the same person, so clearly something mischievous is afoot. And thus, it's revealed that Rick Grayson is actually a fifth dimensional imp named Nightmite. And similar when it comes to imps in the DC universe, this one is a fan of Nightwing. And apparently not only is he a fan, but Nightmite is Dick Grayson's biggest fan of all time. Plus, he's also a fan of Nightwing and Starfire being a couple, to which, of course, Barbara is not too happy to hear. Now, after many panels of Nightbite cooking up some crazy scenarios by using his fifth dimensional magic, whether it's dressing Barbara and Dick up in wedding attire, having their friends and bat family surrounding them in support, or whether it's giving Haley the dog some dope ass ring bearer skills, that's when things start to get less goofy because it's here where Nightbite informs our hero that there's not much time left. And from there, the imp teleports Nightwing over to Bloodhaven, right in front of Blockbuster's tower. And from there, Nightbite provides our hero some context to what's happening. For seemingly many years ago, Blockbuster, back when he was alive and still had a functional beating heart, <laughs> organ-wise, the dude made a deal with the devil, aka Necron, for Blockbuster desired further intelligence. But like anything when it comes to making deals with the devil, a price must be paid. However, given that Blockbuster was one heck of a bastard, Instead of selling his own soul, he sold his daughter's, his firstborn Olivia. And fun fact, she's also a Nightwing fan as well. With us with Blockbuster now six feet under, there's no stopping the demons from taking Olivia's soul. And because Nightbite doesn't want there to be a war between the underworld and the fifth dimension, and because Nightwing is a hero, it's why Nightbite is asking for his help. Nightbite then imbues an extra boost for Dick Sticks, and all he has to do to activate the boost is to speak the phrase of power which apparently is stupid according to Dick, but nonetheless, whatever it takes to save the girl must be done. But before Nightwing jumps into action, he's not going to go in alone. Nightbite teleports Haley to Bloodhaven as well, and he gives her special powers. For tonight, Haley can speak basic sentences and has superpowers. And thus, our heroes enter the building. And eventually, after some tracking down, both Dick and Haley confront the demons who are to claim Olivia's soul. And after speaking the special phrase, Nightwing is awesome, Dick and Haley take on the demons, and they deliver some ass-kicking moves. But just when we think that all hope is lost, as we see one of the demons apprehending Olivia, it turns out that Olivia's got some moves of her own, for she punches away the demon with incredible strength. And this actually makes a lot of sense, given the fact that Olivia is the daughter of Blockbuster. So yeah, if you're going to be the offspring of a supervillain, might as well inherit some of your dad's super strength. Later on, we see that Raven shows up to help Olivia, and given that Raven knows what it's like to hide from demons, She's here to help Olivia to find a new place to live unnoticed and to live happily ever after. However, before Raven and Olivia take off, Olivia hugs Nightbite, because if it wasn't for him, Dick would have never had known about the situation. So basically, he's as much of a hero as Nightwing. And it's here where Nightbite reveals his true name, that being Dixel. And after some encouraging words Dick gives to Dixel about just being yourself and not putting others on a pedestal, that's when Dixel tells our hero that he should be the new blockbuster. Minus the whole criminal empire, violence, and corruption part, <laughs> but rather using Blockbuster's resources for good. Because right now, there is a hole in Bloodhaven, and Dixel believes that Nightwing can be the one to fill in that gap. 
because at the end of the day, Nightwing is awesome. And that, folks, was the end of Nightwing, issue number 98. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly, truly means the world to me. This issue was awesome. This is the sort of story that Tom Taylor is, is fantastic at. He's great at developing a story that has heart, and it's definitely something in his wheelhouse. What I like about the issue is that it has a very cute and welcoming approach. Again, it's very much a love letter to Nightwing, but it's also something much more than that. Basically, Nightwing, Dick Grayson, his character is infectious. His heroic deeds and his willingness to do the right thing is super contagious. And so it inspires people to do the right thing. And this is where we get the introduction of a new character of Nightbite, who I absolutely loved. He's not annoying, nor is, he, nor is his presence unbearable. Nightbite is essentially a byproduct of Dick Grayson because Dick is heroic and his deeds have inspired Nightbite to be good. He's not like a dick like Mr. Spicklet or Batmite. He's generally just trying to do the right thing. And I loved it. Not only is Tom Taylor saying, hey, I love Nightwing and you should too. He's also saying that you don't need to be Dick Grayson to be your hero. Just be yourself. Be the best hero that you can be. And that's honestly a message that never gets old. And because of it, it just makes you want to smile and feel good about yourself. And when it comes to the art, we don't have Bernard Donald for this issue. Instead, we have Daniela Del De Niccolo. I definitely, definitely fucked up your name. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, hot damn in a stick. This is artwork work. And the obvious reason why it works is because of Nightbite. Thanks to De Niccolo's cartoon approach, it helps make this issue endearing. And again, welcoming. Not only for the reader, but for Nightbite's introduction. It just makes everything feel in sync. And it's great stuff all around. Can't wait to see more of Nightbite. So yeah, as always, I'm your Majestic Sayer of Words Supercliff, and if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button, and also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload, and so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number 99? Let me know down in the comment section below, and until the next video, peace. Giggity goo.